we have this extraordinary human power. The power of imagination. We take it totally for granted. This capacity to bring into mind things that aren't present. And on that basis to hypothesize about things that have never been, but could be. Every feature of human culture, in my view, is the consequence of this unique capacity. Now, other creatures may have something like it. Other creatures sing, but they don't write operas. You know, other creatures uh, are agile, but they don't form Olympic committees. Uh, they communicate, but they don't have festivals of theater. They have structures, but they don't build buildings and furnish them. We are unique in this capacity, a capacity that's produced the most extraordinary diversity of human culture, of enterprise, of innovation, 6,000 languages currently spoken on Earth. But I believe that we systematically destroy this capacity in our children and in ourselves. Now, I pick my words carefully. I don't say deliberately. I don't think it's deliberate. But it happens to be systematic. We do it routinely, unthinkingly, and that's the worst of it. Because we take for granted certain ideas about education, about children, about what it is to be educated, about social need and social utility, about economic purpose. We take these ideas for granted and they turn out not to be true. Many ideas which seem obvious turn out not to be true. If you think of it, the arts, and I don't say this exclusively the arts, I think it's also true of science and of maths, but let me, I say about the arts particularly because they are the victims of this mentality currently. The arts especially address the idea of aesthetic experience. An aesthetic experience is one in which your senses are operating at their peak. When you're present in the current moment, when you're resonating with the excitement of this thing that you're experiencing, when you are fully alive. An anesthetic is when you shut your senses off and deaden yourself to what's happening. We're getting our children through education by anesthetizing them. And I think we should be doing the exact opposite. We shouldn't be putting them asleep. We should be waking them up to what they have inside of themselves. But the model we have is this. It's, I believe we have a system of education that is modeled on the interests of industrialism and in the image of it. If you're interested in the model of learning, you don't start from this production line mentality. I believe we've got to go in the exact opposite direction. That's what I mean about changing the paradigm. We have to question what we take for granted. If we create the right incentives, if we value each learner for themselves and properly, growth will happen. But I think we need to shift from this industrial paradigm to an organic paradigm, and I think it's perfectly doable. We need to conceive institutions individually, not system-wide, as ones which don't just value utility, but respect and promote living vitality, the energy of the organization and its potential to be transformative, that doesn't think in terms of linearity, but thinks of creativity and multiple options and multiple possibilities for everybody in it, that's not about conformity, but about diversity, and it's critically about customization. I think all our schools could be like that. Benjamin Franklin once uh, notably said, there are three sorts of people in the world. Those who are immovable, those who are movable, and those who move. And I encourage you to move and get a move on. Thank you. When we come to assess people, we should be fairer with ourselves. Because after all, human beings were born of risen apes not fallen angels. And so what shall we wonder at? Our massacres, our missiles, or our symphonies? The miracle of humankind is not how far we have sunk, but how magnificently we have risen. We will be known among the stars, not by our corpses, but by our poems.